I'm gonna show you some really cool and somewhat advanced features that are gonna make your modeling workflow a lot more accurate, a lot more easy, and remove a ton of frustration, especially using the shape I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. So let's get started. So we're gonna start by adding in a sphere, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a cylinder. I'm gonna give it 64 vertices so it's more round. Shade auto smooth, then I'm just gonna kind of rotate this, scale it a bit, and then just kind of position this right here, and then run a difference Boolean, and then just uh, shade this auto smooth. So this is where we're gonna kind of get into more advanced features. They're very easy, but they are technically advanced because they're not like basic modeling tools, and I'm gonna show you how to tackle this. So the first thing I wanna show you is if I go in here and say I wanted to add like a little indentation, right? If I were to just add in this bevel right in the center, like I've done in other tutorials, and then I bevel that, and then I extrude this, and then inset that a bit, notice the kind of issue here. It's not flowing along nicely with that um, interior area. You can see very, very clearly what I mean. If I you know, slide this up, it's a lot thinner up here. It's a lot wider down here. So it's not aligned properly with that interior side. So what I can simply do here is I can just apply the Boolean and we can do this manually. So I'm gonna apply this Boolean so I have access to this geometry. And this is where the first problem is gonna present itself. So if I try to add in any sort of loop cut here with Control R, you're gonna notice sometimes we have a vertex, sometimes we have an edge, other times we have a vertex. Simple reason for that is that, for example, this face right here is an end gone, one, two, three, four, five, six vertices, so the loop will not be able to pass through. So it's just gonna add, well, nothing right there, right? But the one next to it is a quad. One, two, three, four. It's a quad, so the loop's gonna pass through it nicely. So some of these are quads, some of these aren't quads, right? So what I need to do is I simply need to clean this up so that all these interior faces are quads and I can add in a loop. Now, the way we do that is we have to use Mesh Machine inside of Blender. So I'm going to go ahead. I mean, you don't have to, but you'll literally be slaving away, merging like all this manually, which is just a complete waste of time. So don't do that. Use the tools for the job. We're going to go ahead and use Mesh Machine. We're going to select one edge, alt-click the same edge. That'll select that outer area. And then I can go into vertex mode press the whatever your mesh machine hotkey is. I have mine set to Y. And then we're just gonna go to Boolean cleanup and make sure you're scrolling up so we're cleaning up the outer portion here. Not the inner, but the outer portion. That's gonna merge everything for you nicely and automatically. And now all of these faces are quads because we merged the outer area. So if I add in a loop cut, it's gonna pass through perfectly. So at this point, what I can do is I can double tap G, I can press the E key to turn on the alignment feature, and then the F key to flip the alignment so it's perfectly aligned with those outer sets of uh, edges there. So I'm going to add the first one right here, and then Control R one more time. For the interior area, again, press E, flip it, but make sure you press F again, just find the one, the correct one, so it's aligned right there. See what I mean? And then I could alt-click this interior area, E to extrude, right-click, Alt-S, and then we actually have a consistent you know, inner detail. Now, what if I wanted to scale this? You might have seen this in my other tutorials. This is a detail I like to add in just because it looks cool. If I try to you know, scale this, so this is moving in and this is moving down, you know, it's not going to scale properly. It's going to scale on that global Z or Y or X, and you might think, okay, I can just use normal. It's still not gonna work very well. It's still gonna be inconsistent. And I'll see a lot of beginners, they'll try to eyeball it. They'll select this outer set of edges here, and then they'll like go into side view and they'll like try to, I, I guess you could eyeball it, but I don't see a point. Instead, what we can do is we can turn on a custom orientation. Now, I made a video on this years ago. I'll put the thumbnail on the screen, somewhere on the screen here. It's like a two minute video, um, but I'll just show you how it works here. Basically, if I want to add a custom orientation, I'm just gonna maybe select this outer set of edges here. I'm gonna go here, 
to this plus button that will add a custom orientation. And now watch this. It's going to move along that custom axis right there. It's going to kind of average everything out. So I can go in here and then just scale that. And that's just going to kind of keep everything more aligned. It's going to be an average, of course, but I think it's fine. Then we can just, uh, you know, adjust the auto smooth if we want to. It doesn't matter. Then I'm just going to go in here, get this bevel just to create like a nice detail. And there we go. That's kind of our first like inner set of detail. Then on the inside, I'm just going to use the custom orientation again. This time I need a new one because watch what's happening. If I uh, really, really move this, it's, uh, it's hard to see, but I believe that's getting thinner and thinner. But just barely. So what I'm going to actually do here, just make a new custom orientation so it's following along that one perfectly. And then I can literally just move along that custom orientation. Pretty cool. And I can just go in there and then bevel that. And you can kind of see how we use some easy but more advanced features to get a result like this. And I'm going to make this maybe that size right there. And there we go. Now, the next advanced feature I kind of want to show you is beveling. If you're advanced, you probably already know how to do this. But um, if I want to bevel this outer area, it's very difficult because it's just there's not enough space. So I could slide all these vertices out of the way to kind of make space. But you're going to have to do that for this entire thing. I'm going to have to go in here, slide that, slide that. So again, we're not going to waste our time. We're just going to use an offset cut with Mesh Machine. Just kind of move that down just like that and this doesn't need to be large by any means just enough to kind of give us a buffer to add in a chamfer just like that and guys if any of this is a little bit confusing or you're not really familiar with the modeling tools that i'm teaching you here you should be grabbing our accelerator program this is the go-to resource if you want to learn hard surface modeling we'll get you very very good in about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day i know that doesn't sound like realistic but don't believe me just look at all the proof right here on the screen will get you very very good in the shortest possible time frame and for most of our students that's about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day so if you want to learn that full workflow make sure you check out the program and the link in the top of the description continuing on here we so far have you know pretty clean detail now i'm going to go a little bit more advanced even further so let's say i wanted to add in like a little boolean cut right here on the side. Now it's gonna be a little bit difficult with hard ops because it's gonna to snap to one of those faces and it's not gonna be aligned properly. Now there is a view align feature, but you're gonna to have to kind of estimate, you know, where that is and it's still gonna be a little bit crooked as you can see. So in situations like this, like obviously you could just rotate the sphere and align it like by default, um, but in, in advanced situations, this won't be possible. So I might as well show you the workaround. What we can do here is we can just select one of these faces and then inside of hard ops, press Q. There's a feature right here for align. If you control click, it's going to align your view perfectly with that selection. So this is perfectly aligned with that face. So it's literally like a 90 degree look straight down on the face. All right, in this case, we're gonna need to add in the cube again. And this time we need to align it. Under align, we need to go to view. So we're actually aligning it with the view we're in, and then it's gonna be perfectly aligned. I can rotate this uh, as I need to, and we can just go in here, and that's gonna be aligned as we want, right? And then I can just go back into side view or whatever, and we'll just kind of move this back. On. We're still using that global orientation, by the way. We'll just kind of move that in there. And again, th this is a sphere, so I could like, it's not going to be perfectly flat because it curves, right? But we could do something like that. And again, that's going to be the easiest way to kind of set that up. So now I can go in, I can make this shape and I can do, you know, a bevel like this. I can go in and then bevel this. And I'm going to show you another cool feature right here. So if your bevel's a bit too tight, 
then if you try to bevel a bottom area like this, you're not going to have enough space. Like I can realistically only bevel to this point. Uh, otherwise, it's going to pinch. And if you're happy with that, that's fine. But if you want to make a larger bevel, this is going to happen. So what we need to do here is we need to go in here, control click this entire outer set of edges. And then in Mesh Machine, there's a feature called Unfuck. Uh, we're just going to select that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to scroll up. And it's a little bit buggy. So you know what I'm going to do instead? Sometimes this is buggy. Also, I'm on my laptop. So what I'm going to do is just do this area. We'll just go in just like that. And then if I scroll up on my mouse wheel, it's going to do something called a propagation, which is just going to expand this. So we're not like looking like that. It's going to be a nice, even, consistent flow, just kind of like that. And then I could actually go in and just run a mirror. So Alt X and Hard Ops, and this time we would have to set this to, instead of Cursor, the Active Origin, and then we're going to set this to, okay, in this case, the rotation is applied, and that's kind of an error on my, I could re-record this part, but I think this is worth showing you. Earlier, I uh, when I was adding this bevel, I pressed Control A to apply the rotation and scale. What I should have done here is apply the scale because now I don't have a rotation value to work with, so I can't really mirror this easily. So I'm just gonna kinda undo that and I'll show you what I should have done instead. Again, I'll keep this in the video because it's helpful. So right here, let me just undo it before I actually applied that. You're gonna see before I applied the rotation and scale, it had these random values. After, it was all uniform. In this case, I should have just applied the scale because if I don't, the bevel is gonna be skewed. See what I mean? The bevel is going more in this direction than in this direction. But if I apply scale, it's even. So in this case, don't apply rotation, just apply the, the scale. That was an oversight on my part, but that should hopefully help you. Then we can bevel that. And then same idea, I can go in here, bevel this area. And once again, we'll just go to this portion. We're going to use the unfuck feature, propagate by scrolling up. And now, since I still have that rotation value, I can press Alt X with hard ops to run a mirror, just like that. So that's why you wanna keep your rotation values um, in a, a situation like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mirror, this time I'm gonna mirror across the 3D cursor, so Alt X, this time I'll set it to cursor. And this one can be, I believe it's local in this case. And we're just going to have a local mirror over to the other side there, just like that. And then if I, you know, wanted to, I could always go back in, control click on a line. And then if I wanted to kind of, you know, align this a bit better, I can certainly do that. Just so maybe like that. And then we'll get in, run that mirror again. And sometimes the viewport's messy. When you use that align feature, you can just press three on the number pad to go back into a side view. So, you know, I know this stuff looks complicated, but I'm trying to like really emphasize, you know, what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just gonna use a symmetry in that case. If you're using Mesh Machine, you can actually just use a symmetry if it's, uh, you know, real geometry like that. So again, this isn't like, anything crazy advanced, but if you don't know the tools exist, then you don't know the tools exist. And most people, what they're doing is they're wasting dozens, if not hundreds of hours just working and, and, and they don't know what they don't know, right? It's not their fault. If you don't know a tool exists, you don't know the tool exists. So like, I'll see this all the time. People are like drastically overcomplicating solutions instead of, you know, learning the right tool sets. This is why I always encourage you to invest in your education and just get the information so you're not wasting time. Whether that's, you know, our accelerator program or somebody else's, it doesn't matter. But if you don't know these tools exist, you don't know they exist, right? And that's kind of why I'm making this video. And there we go. We kind of have a, uh, a cool shape like that. And then to kind of remove the shading problems down here, I could either add in a loop. Actually, yeah, that's probably the best solution. I can just add in a loop there, and that's just going to push up the shading. It's basically what that loop does right there. It's not perfect shading. This is still going to be an end gone when the Boolean's applied, right? 
and that's bent, so it's gonna have a shading error, but you can't see it. So there you go. And now we have a uh, cool looking kind of shape like this. And you know, you can go in, you can keep kind of stacking, you know, different shapes, different designs, and just make this like look even cooler. You could drop in a small bevel and do that. And just, you know, kind of keep iterating on this shape. I don't like how that looks, but you kind of get the idea here. So this is kind of a unique way to model using custom orientations, mirrors, cleaning up, you know, more complex issues that you might run into. But most importantly, I wanted to kind of demonstrate how you can make, you know, complex situations pretty easy as long as you know the right tools exist. You know, a lot of beginners, they'd come in here and they'd eyeball everything or they'd like position everything manually. And that could work. It's just a very, very long and inaccurate process. So the point here wasn't to make a, a crazy complex tutorial. It was to show you a good set of tools that you can start employing in your workflow, you know, as soon as today. If this video is useful, make sure you drop a like. You can subscribe to the channel. But most importantly, guys, if you want to learn our full hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks with just 30 to 60 minutes a day, like we've done for nearly 5,000 students, then go ahead, click the link in the pinned comment or in the top of the description to check that program out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.